Okay, so a few weeks ago, my airbag lights started coming on intermittently until finally it just kept staying on. Uh, it could be a, a few things, could be a bad you know, impact sensor up in the front. Uh, sometimes a lot of people have complained that the wire harness under the seats uh, goes bad because uh, the that's linked to the airbag system it senses whether somebody's actually sitting in the seat or not or if it's a child in the seat uh, but soon after my cruise control stopped working now my horn doesn't work so uh, that all points to one thing which is a part called the clock spring which is located behind the steering wheel and it looks like this and we're going to need a special tool to remove the steering wheel 15 bucks at Harbor Freight wheel puller set they have another set that's like more than double the price I think um, does the same job so might be the only time I ever use the tool so 15 bucks for that also going to need your ratchet um, and what your first thing you're going to want to do is park your vehicle with the wheels pointing straight steering wheel centered uh, it doesn't have to be exact it's not that critical but one thing you don't want it to be is completely turned around so front wheels pointing straight and uh, um, you're also going to need to since we're going to be removing the airbag you absolutely must take the terminals off the battery cut all power you don't want this thing firing off on you accidentally and uh, you know it's better to reset the clock on your radio than it is to have this thing explode in your face also when you're shopping you may be tempted you know this this parts actually kind of pricey for the little piece of junk that it is um, you may be tempted to go buy a used one or pull one from a junkyard I don't recommend that because you see this thing here that's a pull tab once this is installed and the steering wheels in place you remove that pull tab that way this the internals of this are centered with the steering wheel and the wheels and the reason this unit failed is probably my fault is I replaced the steering rack on this vehicle and I did not secure the steering wheel when I did it so when I disconnected the steering wheel the steering wheel spun on me and I thought I returned it to the original position but it may have been turned a full 180 degrees or 360 degrees and so that would have you know this this is centered right now so it can turn to its maximum rotation in each direction well now my replaced steering rack it was turned 360 degrees and then when I turn the steering wheel it winds up turning one direction beyond its limits and damage the internals so when it ships to you it's locked in the centered position if you buy a used one you'll have no idea where this uh, the internals are set and you could be just wasting your time uh, we'll say you could be spinning your wheels so let's get started I'm going to disconnect the battery and then we'll start getting the steering wheel pulled off hopefully this is a quick job I really don't have time to be dicking around with this okay the battery is disconnected and I waited 20 minutes to be safe now 10 millimeter socket if you reach back behind here on each side you'll feel the pockets where the bolts are undo those and our airbag and controls assembly will lift off the steering wheel okay the bolts are off and you will lift the assembly up this way and you will unplug the two yellow plugs don't worry about confusing them they are keyed differently you can't mistakenly plug one into the wrong socket when you would put it back together and then there's also wire harness that plugs in down here you're going to unplug that and then this will lift right off and just in case you don't notice it these have little squeeze 
clips that you squeeze on this both sides here to unplug them from here. And this is that other plug, just your standard, the little squeeze clip on the top. Okay, the assembly is off. 13 millimeter bolt. And first I'm going to try breaking it free with a standard ratchet just to see. I think I might need a bigger breaker bar. Uh, but let's try it this way, just for informational purposes. I'm going to just put the camera aside, sure I could go get my tripod, but I'm feeling lazy today. So, now I don't know how well you can see with that shot. Let's see. So you got to hold the steering wheel with one hand and try to turn the ratchet with the other hand. And yes, it came came free just fine. Came free just fine with a regular ratchet. Actually, it does not need to be on there that tight. So, but it's basically pressed in there. So. Once you get this off, put that aside, then this assembly lifts right off. But if you notice, that steering wheel still is not going anywhere. So that brings us to the next tool, the wheel puller. Okay, here's the wheel puller set. And universal for all kinds of applications. Of course, you're going to have to use that, and how it works is you bolt, you're going to bolt into these two holes here, through here, and there's a big center bolt that's going to go through the center, and on the end of that, there's different attachments for the end. We're going to use this small pointy one, and that will push down into the center shaft there while pulling on the outer yoke. And so this mounts onto the end of this, which goes through there. And the size bolts you're gonna use for your caravan will be two of these going through there. So I'll set that up and show it to you. Okay, see if I can get a good shot of this for you here. The center shaft with the point mounted on the end is centered down on the, the main steering shaft. Uh, the steering shaft end where the bolt goes in, that is actually beveled in to accommodate the bevel. That's on the tip we put on there. I screwed both these bolts all the way down, just hand tightened. I didn't use a ratchet on them. I might just snug them a little bit with a ratchet, but more importantly, I just... It's not easy, but I tried to do a measurement on both sides so that both bolts are uh, even the same depth inside the yoke. And now I'll tighten this with my ratchet slowly. Okay, I snugged these both down with the 9th and 16th inch till it stopped. Now, oddly, those are 9 sixteenths. It should have been metric. Most of this van is metric, but they seem to throw stuff in. That's standard. And this up here seems to be 14 millimeter. So now I'll slowly tighten that. And we will see if the steering wheel will voluntarily pop off. Here we go again with me being lazy. Much easier than I expected. Put that aside. And there we go. And it looks like I'm going to have to take off the cover just to get to those two screws. If I want to be real lazy, I'll just cut that out, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, for the cover, you have three screws. They're located underneath there, two of which seem to come out. But the third one, and I think this is by design, kind of stays stuck in there. Uh, I've done, removed this before, and I know that 
those screws are a bugger to get back in. Also, on this side, there is a snap clip there that holds that together. And typically you try to take it apart and it snaps, breaks. So I think we can work around it just the way it is. So the clock spring has a screw there, has a screw there. Then we have the back side, which is pointing down where everything leads into the assembly down there. So we'll have to unclip those. And actually, before I even unscrew it, I just reached under and undid both of those. I think it just could just be easier. The old one should lift straight out as it does. And at this point, I'd make sure your turn signal is in its neutral position. I don't know if that would affect anything or not, but just you'll want to do that. Okay, and the, the new one will drop into place easy peasy. There's, of course, the two screws we previously removed, and there's a little alignment pin up there. So first thing you do is line it up with that alignment pin. Then I'll do those two screws. Okay, that is in place. Grab my wire harness now. One thing I notice is there's a third plug here. The, the clock spring only takes two plugs. Um, this black one is probably to the feature that's not on my base model van. Uh, so it's the yellow and the white. All three plugs are keyed completely different, so there's really no risk of getting them mixed up, plugging them in. Okay, plugs are in place, snapped in. Now I'm going to screw, put the screws back into this cover here while the steering wheel's out of the way. And I know from experience this actually may be the hardest part of the whole job is getting those screws in there. They put up a fight sometimes. Okay, the cover's back on. Time to put the steering wheel back on. Obviously, I removed the steering wheel puller assembly. So, the shaft is keyed. So, there's a wide notch. Oops. Okay, the shaft is keyed. There's a wide notch right there, and there is a wider bump right there. So, you don't have to worry about putting the steering wheel on cockeyed or anything. It will just go on one way, and the wires will feed right through the opening there. And also, this pin here, which is what actually links, I suppose, the steering wheel to the clock spring, will nestle right into that gap right there. Okay, now the next step before you put the bolt on and tighten it down is to place this yoke assembly back into place. And guess who forgot to do that and put that bolt on place? You're, you guessed it, yours truly. So, I'll get that on. The bolt, <laughs> it looks dirty now, uh, but if, when you look at yours, you'll see what looks like a little bit of white spray paint on there. That'll be, I guess, some thread locker. So I am going to put some blue medium strength thread locker onto the bolt and then tighten that sucker down. Um, don't go torquing it on to the point where you snap that bolt off in there. Don't, don't know if that's possible, but um, uh, just get it really good and tight. Uh, judge it based on you know how much torque it took for you to get it off you know you did it up by hand with a regular ratchet so and let me get that together okay now once again half inch socket tighten this down till it's snug then once that's snug Pull the rip cord out, then hold on to the steering wheel, tighten this down as tight as you can get it with uh, with a standard ratchet. Don't use a breaker bar. I'd be afraid of snapping that thing off down inside the shaft. Um, remember, you took it off with this. You don't have to put it on with a torque wrench. Um, get it good and snug. You'll feel it nice and solid. And the reason why I say take off the rip cord 
is as I was tightening it, tightening it down, the steering wheel turned, and of course it's turning this also, and this thing popped free. Gave me a shock. <laughs> it's like, did I just break it and have to start all over again? Uh, but it seems like we're fine. The little pin down underneath didn't snap off. Um, if that had to happen, that would have really sucked. So before you tighten this down all the way, pull your rip cord. Uh, next step will be to uh, reattach our cables. Uh, you're going to start with this one. Should give you the most room, and then you'll plug these two in and tuck it in. This thing here seems like it's kind of a counterweight, and it's actually what gives your steering wheel its springiness when you hit the horn. Just, just a curiosity. Okay, the first one you plug in, jiggle it around a bit, make sure it snaps all the way in. That one didn't want to snap in until finally I got it. Now it's locked in, and I'll do the other two. Okay, everything's back in place. Uh, the plugs are self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go any further with that. My last step will be the two bolts that go in through the back. They do not seem to have any thread locker on it, but I'm going to put a dot onto each of them just to be safe. They do screw into metal, not into plastic. Okay, battery's attached. Airbag light is off. Cruise control working horn working so seems like that was the problem that fixed it for me and uh, now let's crack the old one open and see how this puppy works okay now for the big reveal there's 12 little clips that go around the circumference of it and this is what we have this is what we have inside is a ribbon cable now I would have thought that it'd be like a contact plate and then brushes that go around that way it could go full 360 degrees and still keep contact but I guess in reality is if you were in an accident those contacts could separate from the contact plate and your airbag wouldn't go off. So, I see no damage down here, but it's possible if I unwind it all the way when we get to the contacts that are on this end, I might find a break. So, you know, let, me, let me unravel this thing and see what we get. Okay, this is it all the way on round unwound and I bent this little plastic tab up and down in there is where all these metal wire flat ribbon wires are snapped off uh, I'm sure I was the cause of it I'm sure this thing went beyond its limits So, well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, please hit like, share, etc., etc., and and follow me. And I will see you next time.